Welcome to my channel. I'm Zhang Jingxu. Let's look at the problem 23 in chapter 13. Chapter 13 is about the fluids. We can see we have a dam and the, it's H, the head, right? And the B and the T. So this is three divisions. And then now first one, we need to show that the total force of the water at the dam is F. So we prove this equation. So how can we do that? We can see the water keep running to the dam in this way. So in this small fraction, dy, dy, a small fraction is the force, df, agree, agree, df. And so this force do the integral, uh, then we can get this force. So for each small fraction, this df uh, changes, so we can do the integral. And we know force equal to the pressure times A, right? Pressure times A. So first thing we need to find is the pressure on this small fraction and times the A. So for A is easy, you can say this length is uh, how much? dy, this length is B. So it's dy times B. Now, can you find the pressure for this uh, small fraction? Sure, because P equal to rho gh, rho gh. And h in this case is uh, from the surface to this uh, small fraction. So it becomes y, right? How the distance from the surface to the small fraction, y, so it becomes rho gy. So this is the pressure on this small fraction. And this small fraction uses P times the dA, the areas for this small fraction. This small fraction, this side is dy, this side is B. So it becomes a B times dA, agree? So this is dF in this integral. And then we can integral the force in two sides. So the force becomes do the integral. The Y becomes zero to H. From zero to h, then we can get it there, right? The second question asks us to find the torque uh, about the base of the dam. So base of dam is zero. Uh, uh, so now due to this force, can be considered to act with a lever arm equal to h over three. So how can we do that? First thing we need to find the torque about the base of the dam. So you can see this is df. We, we just get it df at zero. And then the distance from this force to the rotation axis is h minus y, agree, from zero to zero. So now we can say d torque, the torque is the distance h minus y times df, and input the df inside, it looks like this one, so we do integral, we get the torque equal to this one. Right, now you can see, we know the force, and we also know the torque, can you find the d, can you find the d? The uh, can act with a lever arm. So can you find this uh, lever arm? Sure, because torque equal to force times this uh, lever arm D. So D is torque over F. You can find, yes, it's exact, exactly H over 3. The third one asks ask you to find the freestanding concrete dam of a uniform thickness T. So T is given, H is given. Now, ask you what is the minimum thickness is needed to prevent overturning. So, how, now we need to find this T, right? How much T should it be if there, there is no overturning? If there is no overturning, what does that mean? That means the torque from this uh, concrete is larger than the torque from this water, agree? So, to prevent overturning, the torque caused by the gravity, the concrete, about the lower right for from the corner, this one should, should be as big as the torque caused by water. So the torque by the water, we just get it there. Right, we just get it there, so we write it at there. And this all becomes the density of the water. And then now we look at the torque about the wall. Of course, we know where the gravity is, because this is uniform distributed concrete. The Central mass is there, a great so gravity pointing down this way, and then it torque from this uh, gravity to this uh, rotation axis, this side, how, how much less t over 2, a great so it becomes gravity times t over 2. This is a uh, torque from the concrete, the wall. And then, can you find the mass for the concrete? Yes, use the density times the volumes, h, b, t. Now we input is m inside. We solve this equation. We can get the final answer. Look at this one. So we find there is a ratio. The t must as large as 0.38 h. 
to prevent overturning. Thank you.